Welcome to Live Love Play. My name is Ross and this is For the Love Of, a periodic interview series about books, movies, TV, and everything else we geek out about. Joining me today is actor and filmmaker Manu Intereme. Thank you for joining me today, Manu. Thanks, man. It's Manu. You got the last name right, though. So, <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad to be here, man. All right. Well, let's dive right in. Uh, why don't you tell our listeners a bit about yourself and your background and experience up to now? Wow, that could take the whole show. Um, my name is Manu Entereme. I was born uh, in Bonnie Doon, California, uh, by Santa Cruz. And uh, I lived most of my life traveling around the, the world with my hippie parents. So I had no other choice, really, but to become an actor. So when I uh, finished high school, I came out to L.A. and went to some school and started acting. Um, most people know me from Star Trek Voyager, uh, or I recently did a, a year on One Tree Hill, the last season, playing Billy. But uh, I'm most known for my work as Echeb on Star Trek Voyager, and I've been producing some films over the last eight years and uh, you know, doing a lot of different TV and movies and stuff. Awesome. Nice summarization. So obviously, uh, uh, you've done a lot of work as, as an actor. I I'm very familiar, of course, with your work on Voyager. Not so much as One Tree Hill, but that's something to, to uh, look into. And you've been branching out into other production roles like writer and producer. What, what's it like to branch out like that after starting as an actor? First of all, it's okay that you haven't seen One Tree Hill. There's not a huge crossover audience from Star Trek to One Tree Hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, it was a great character, though. This guy was, uh, he was terrible. I played this just re re just a repugnant person. Um, he was not a good guy at all. Uh, total villain, uh, drug dealer, rapist, bad human being. So it was interesting to wear those shoes and get that meme, even though it was network television. And I got to work with a writer friend of mine named Mark Schwann, who actually is a largely responsible for my career in general. He gave me a, a role in a teen movie called Whatever It Takes way back in the day with Shane West and James Franco and um, uh, who else was in that thing? Aaron Paul and a, a bunch of people. So um, that was cool. I started babbling and I, I someone just called my phone so I forgot what the question was. What am I doing? Uh, what was it like to expand from uh, starting as a, as a uh, an actor and moving into writer and producer. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's all the same game. Just pr producing and writing is you take okay. your career more into your own hands instead of, um, constantly just trying to get a part in somebody else's vision. Okay, yeah. And I realized when I was 30 years old, uh, I w wish I would have realized sooner in the game, but that a list actors in town, um, were they had their own production companies and they were largely producing their own material okay, so right. you know the DiCaprio's and the, the right, right. Clint Eastwood's of the world they uh, to go from you know a couple different generations apart but you know the movie stars they tend to uh, also produce the material that they work and in the long run I want to be Batman not uh, play a small role in a Batman TV show so I decided to to put my hands uh, further into into my career and start raising the funds for films and casting and writing and uh, producing and all the things that that takes. It's Funny you should say Batman. First thing I thought of when you mentioned their own production company was uh, Ben Affleck. Yeah, exactly. Uh, ben Affleck and Matt Damon, they both uh, produce their own things and make sure that they have a, a lot of creative control on the projects that they do. Otherwise, you're, you're sort of subject to a lot of luck. I mean, the whole industry is, is luck anyway, uh, but it's nice to have some control over the, the type of art that you're going to make and, and the stuff that you're going to put out there. Awesome. So the, for the subject you, you came here for, what is the circuit? The Circuit is my next project. It's a film that I have to make. It's sort of a must-do um, thing for me. I've been on the convention circuit, uh, going around to the Comic-Con scene and the, and the convention circuit, pop culture conventions, since 
I got off Star Trek Voyager. And the cool thing was it allowed me to go around the world and visit cultures all over the planet. And Star Trek conventions and pop culture conventions and comic cons are a very surreal, amazing place to be behind the scenes of. And I saw so many strange, weird stories and heard so many stories and hung out with so many uh, actors and writers and directors and famous people that in weird circumstances that I knew that I had to make a film that took place uh, at the place that I've been spending, you know, 15 years of my life. And then I thought, how could I do that? Um, what would make that interesting more than just a behind the scenes look? Because there's been a few behind the scenes looks at conventions. So I decided to, I, I was a big fan of Twilight Zone and Amazing Stories and Tales from the Crypt and the, the recent um, Black Mirror uh, out of Europe. I love anthology films and anthology TV. And I don't think there's enough of that uh, in the world. And I don't think there's enough of those around. They're difficult to make because every episode is a new story. But I thought with the circuit, we could do the first ever multi-genre anthology movie. So you have 10 stories, 10 directors, 10 genres, but they all take place over the weekend of a fictional mega pop culture convention, like mega Comic-Con, Palooza, Trek, or whatever. Uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah, but San Diego Comic-Con times like 10 like this is like this huge event that's happening on planet Earth, and the- that's pretty big. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that gets that big, except for maybe the Super Bowl. Yeah, it would definitely be like you know a fictional mega con, like this, the size of San Diego Comic Con or bigger. And these ten stories would all happen over the weekend of of that show, and so you would have a sci fi epic and a horror. You know, we'd we'd have vampires and zombies and sci-fi and comedy and regular drama. And all these genres will cross over and the stories will dance in and out of themselves um, in creative and fun ways. They'll just, the edges of the stories will touch each other. And there'll be a, there's a sci-fi time travel through story that goes through the entire movie and hooks all the episodes together. And that's the circuit film. That's the concept, at least. Um, and it stars a bunch of people from sci-fi, fantasy, horror, um, sci-fi icons to you know people that are on TV now um, in regular drama all the way to uh, comic book films and stuff. Awesome. I've seen a few of the, the names. Uh, the, it's a really impressive cast list. A lot of people you've worked with before, correct? Yeah, most of them I've worked with for or I've got to know actually on the convention circuit. Um, you know, we've got a, a bunch of Star Trek cast, uh, Bob Picardo, Robert Beltran, Terry Farrell, uh, Ethan Phillips, myself, Armin Shimmerman. If I start naming names, I'm going to forget somebody. Um, but there's a ton of people from Star Trek and Defiance and Game of Thrones and Buffy the Vampire Slayer and... Uh, the shows just keep going on and on, but we've got a, we've got Mindy Robinson, Rob Archer from Lost Girl, uh, Ryan Eagled from The Blacklist and the new Blacklist uh, spinoff. Uh, oh, he's going to kill me! I hope he doesn't listen to this. Um, <laughs> there's a name to his show. I should know it. Um, what's the uh, What's the Blacklist spinoff Ryan called? Eagle. I, I can't remember. Um, Redemption, that's what it's called. Very cool. So, would, the way you're going about this, would you call The Circuit a crowdsourced film? Uh, well, it's starting to be, yeah. The, we're, what we're trying to do first is, three days ago, we launched a Kickstarter campaign. And over the last eight months, we've been filming a bunch of different teasers and trailers for it to... Um, we really want to involve the fan base in the movie. Besides it being the first multi-genre film ever, we also want it to be the most fan collaborative film that's ever been made, a a professional big budget Hollywood movie that also includes the fan stories. So when we launched the website for the circuit, uh, which is the circuitfilm.com, we also announced the 
beginning of a, a writing competition for people that want to write screenplays. And half of the stories in the circuit are going to come directly from the fans, and half of the stories are going to be from the actor's perspective. So we really get a good roundabout um, example of, of what happens on the convention scene. Crowdsourcing like that can be a, a little risky. Uh, what what are some of the the challenges you face so far in product in pre production? Well, it's uh, it's definitely risky because you have to put, especially today, you have to put a, a decent amount of money into the project in order to make it in order to show people that you can make a quality film. Um, you know, a, a few years ago, you could just sit on your couch and and say, "Hey, guys, we want to make a movie," and and maybe spark some interest in the crowd, but it's become just as much of a competition as you know uh, the Hollywood system now. You've got to show people that you can really create uh, good content. And so we spent a good eight months and, and quite a bit of money producing these trailers and teasers and, and letting people get a, a good idea of what this is going to be. And then the, the real um, challenge that you face is getting the news out there, you know, getting news outlets and press outlets to tell people about this project because we want to do the most fan collaborative project ever. But if the fans don't hear about it, they're certainly not going to participate in it. So the, the hard part is, is getting enough news organizations and Facebook followers and et cetera, uh, radio, TV shows like you're doing, um, to get the word out there. And, um, that's, that's the toughest part, but I think we're doing it and we've launched for two days and so far we've raised 20 grand. We're trying to raise 450 uh, during this campaign to do the first three episodes of the film. And if we do that, it's pretty easy from there on out to get the rest of the money for the film. So your your Kickstarter campaign launched on the 19th of September. Uh, you, you've raised a fair amount of money so far. Congratulations, and I'm glad to help where I can. Uh, what were some of the preparations you made leading up to the crowdfunding campaign launch? Thank you. Yeah, we, we launched the morning of the, the 20th uh, at 8 a.m. And, oh my God, I mean, there's been so much preparation. We, you know, we, we had to hire a PR team. We had to hire a digital marketing team. We had to put together a bunch of ads. We had to shoot a bunch of production and trailers and teasers and, and move some actors together. And, and you know, the, the tough thing, too, was, you know, I had to sell all of these actors, even though a lot of them are friends of mine, on coming in and making this thing for not a lot of money and, and not the money that everybody's used to in order to try to make a film that, that, that blows the world away. And doing that on the cheap is, is difficult. But I think if people go to the circuitfilm.com and they go check out uh, the Kickstarter page at the circuit, they'll see that, you know, um, all the work was worthwhile and all the work from here on out is definitely going to be worthwhile. We have some great teasers up. We're, we're launching, every, actually every week we're releasing a new teaser of the week, uh, fun videos, and uh, we're going to do some fun live feeds and just keep the campaign interesting and a good time to watch as well as to donate in. Crowdfunding isn't easy. I've followed several, contributed to a few. Uh, of Not a lot are able to make it, so I'm glad to hear that you're keeping people engaged, keeping people involved as the campaign moves forward. Yeah, you have to. Um, I think we have a, an amazing idea, and I, I think that's the first thing that you have to get right, is you, you have to have a good idea. And who doesn't want to see a multi-genre anthology film. It's never been done before. It's something new, uh, which is also a, a, the reason that we went the crowdfunding route is it's, it, selling the studio on a new idea is always amazingly difficult. Um, so we're sort of leaving it up to the fan base, whether they want to see this or not. And I think they do. Uh, we've gotten a great response so far and we're just going to keep, keep it going. And um, hopefully within a couple months, we're in pre-production and we're making this thing. So how can people contribute to the circuit and in what ways can they contribute? In so many ways. You can go to thecircuitfilm.com and you can write a screenplay for us, look at our actors, write 1 to 20 pages and send it in. Uh, 1 to 20 pages, you pick the genre, and then you have to make sure that you tie the story into a convention weekend. 
Um, that's the only rule with the screenplay. So you can be, you know, you, you could have characters that are at a convention and they could step through a porthole and end up in a different dimension and suddenly be in medieval England. That's not against the rules. It just has to tie into a convention weekend somehow. Other than that, you can, as soon as anybody donates to the campaign, if you go to the circuit, uh, go to Kickstarter and go just search the circuit, um, you will see, you, you can donate. There's a bunch of great perks and ways that you can get involved. But after you donate, you go back to the website at thecircuitfilm.com and send us a letter or a resume or anything you want to send us to show us how you want to be involved with the film. And for each episode of the film that we fund, we're going to bring in one fan per each key department of the film to come on and intern on the movie so they can get a credit and experience on a big budget Hollywood film. Awesome. That's, that's amazing. I think it's a phenomenal idea. I think it'll be a ton of fun. Um, and hopefully the fans will spread the news and, and we'll get to do this. So where can people find more information about the circuit? Uh, you can follow us at the circuit movie on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Tumblr, Instagram, etc. We're mostly active on Twitter and Facebook. That's where we're doing most of our outreach. Um, but at the circuit movie on all social media, you can also go to the website at thecircuitfilm.com and check out how to write for the show and check out all the actors and the different people that are involved and check out the videos that we've released so far. And please, when you do that, share those videos with your friends if you like them. That's the most important thing that I can, if you like this film, if you want to be involved in the film, share it. Just go on your page and share whatever you liked, whether it was one of our videos, whether it was the, the, the website itself, the Kickstarter campaign, just share it with the world because that's the only way we're going to get this done. Say I don't have a lot of talent when it comes to writing, but I have a fun idea. Can I submit something like that even if I don't know how to write a script or a screenplay? Yeah, actually, we have free screenplay writing software on the website, but um, the those are the, the basic writing rules are you, you pick one, you write it one to 20 pages in length, whether it's screenplay format or short story novel format. Um, and then you write a one page paragraph summary, uh, and send it into us. So you definitely don't have to know how to write a screenplay. Uh, in fact, if you're a better writer, just, just writing a story, we would prefer to read the short story. And then if you're picked, you'll come on and you'll help us a use one of our writers, and we'll adapt it to a screenplay format. Very cool. So, uh, obviously, the circuit is taking up the majority of your time right now, but do you have any other upcoming projects or films or anything else you'd like to mention or promote? Yeah, we have a, I have a ton of stuff coming out this year. Um, Unbelievable is coming out this year, a sci-fi comedy. Uh, Fifth Passenger should be out early next year. Uh, that's uh, the first film that me and Scott Baker and Morgan Lariah and one of my producers, Timothy Gagliardo, on the circuit uh, put out. The It was what got me involved, really, in, in taking crowdfunding seriously. It's a great sci-fi uh, sci horror story that takes place on a small space pod in outer space that's lost in the middle of nowhere with a few survivors on board. Um, it's like Alfred Hitchcock's lifeboat, but in space. And that's, nice. that stars uh, Tim Russ and Marina Sirtis and myself, Armin Shimmerman, Doug Jones, uh, all of which are still uh, our circuit cast members as well. Um, and it was such a joy to make that film that uh, I, I had to keep them on board to, to make this next one. Um, the Green Fairy is coming out. Uh, a film called Promises, a little indie movie I did, is coming Um uh, you can always go to my IMDb. I always forget what I should be um, promoting because there's a, a bunch of stuff that's still in the works that's coming out next year. Instant from Rod Roddenberry, uh, the short film that's uh, amazing. We'll probably get to his website or um, distribute it in, in some fashion soon um, from Roddenberry Entertainment. Uh, there was something else that I, I just wanted to say but I, I forgot what it was it left me but yeah a lot of i mean a lot of stuff in the works and a lot of stuff coming out but 
You are right. I'm like 24 seven tied into the circuit uh, for the next year at least. It's the movie that I'm focusing on and the movie that I want to make and put all my time and effort and energy into for, for at least this next year. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing and hearing more about it as well as looking forward to the finished product. It sounds like it sounds really ambitious, really fun and really risky, but that's what makes it exciting. It's absolutely ambitious and it's a huge dream. Um, and it, you know, it's also going to cost 1.5 million to make, um, which is cheap when it comes to making movies, but expensive when it comes to raising money. So I don't know. I think we've got the, a great cast together and we've got people that believe in it. And if the fan base believes in it, we'll be able to do this. And, um, uh, it is exciting and it is risky, but nothing worth fighting for isn't. So, uh, we're going to be going for it for the next 39 days. And I hope you guys out there support us and join us and um, become part of the team. Well, I certainly help put the word out for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you for joining me, Manu. This has been Live, Love, Play. My name is Ross. I'll thank you for Armin Shimmerman and for Doug Jones. And um, Mindy Robinson says thank you. And uh, Rob Archer says thank you. And I... Just kidding. I'm not going to name my whole cast, but <laughs> um, it's a lot of people have put their time, time, heart and energy into this thing. So uh, I'm glad to uh, be able to share it. Well, thank you for watching and listening. My name is Ross. This has been Love, Love, Play. If you enjoyed this interview, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and visit my website, www.iliveloveplay.com. Live, Love, Play is produced in association with Busy Little Beaver Productions. I love those. Uh, those are great names. Live, Love, Play and Busy Little Beaver. I'm all for the names of your show. That's good stuff.